How does unbelief contribute to the need I feel for pornography? Well, um, hmm, okay. Let's see if we can distinguish the feeling the need for pornography and unbelief. Okay. Feeling need for sexual titillation is like getting hungry when you haven't had anything to eat for a day. It's as natural as the day is long. Sex, <laughs> we're, we're just wired, men and women, women differently, but not without it, uh, is, is a desire that rises up in the body and is there. Just, there it is. And it wasn't believing and unbelieving that made that desire happen. That was hormones that made that happen. So the first answer to the question of how does unbelief relate to my sense of need is that it has anything to do with the immediate, I, I want, I want, I feel, I desire. Those desires are just there like I'm, I'm hungry for a, a steak or I'm tired and I need to go to sleep. Now, the question is, what do you do with it? Now, there, unbelief has everything as to whether you need pornography. See, I, I said titillation or, or some kind of, I want sexual feelings. I want sexual feelings. I want, I want to satisfy this desire. That's natural. But now, whether you go towards pornography to do that is the issue of sin because pornography is <coughs> an abuse of women, first of all, and secondly, it's the illegitimate, I think, stoking of a legitimate desire, and God has other ways for that to be, to be satisfied. So, unbelief relates like this. Unbelief, in my understanding of, of faith, is that you don't just believe that Jesus is the Son of God, died for your sins, rose again, reigns in heaven, is coming again, and uh, forgives my sins. That's factual. It's also a being satisfied with that, treasuring that. Faith is not just an intellectual assent to doctrines. Faith is an affectional embrace of the Savior for my deepest longings. So, unbelief is a failure to be satisfied in, in Jesus. It's a failure to go to him as the living water and go to him as the bread from heaven, go to him as the light of the world, and to go to him as a satisfaction that's deep enough and strong enough so that when I am tempted to go in a sinful direction to satisfy an appetite, say an appetite for, for companionship or an appetite for food or an appetite for sex, any of these appetites, if I want to go in a sinful direction, the satisfaction of Jesus, that is belief, belief in Jesus, embracing Jesus, loving Jesus, being content in Jesus, is going to be the power that severs the root of that impulse. So I believe with all my heart that the, the main way that we're sanctified in life is that we conquer the power of the promises of sin with the power of a superior promise. Jesus saying, I'll be with you. I'll love you. I'll take care of you. I'll reward you. You will know a fellowship with me if you conquer this that you wouldn't have known otherwise. And who, who of us has not tasted that, right? We've either yielded and gone into some sexual thing that has made us feel yucky and dirty and we have to repent and, and hope we won't do it again, or we've conquered, we've walked into some path of light and holiness and purity, and everything in us is saying, yes, oh, that I could do that every single time because it is so much richer and fuller and deeper than the other way. So un, if you take unbelief, as not simply denying facts, but as uh, not embracing Christ as profoundly satisfying to your soul, then, then, uh, then it wouldn't make sense. But if, if belief includes an affectional embrace of Christ as your deepest satisfaction, then it's going to have a huge effect on whether you embrace pornography.